Coach, talk a little bit about the uh, non-conference schedule because sometimes it seems people are never satisfied. But you put together an outstanding, what I think is an outstanding non-conference schedule. Some uh, teams that are going to be uh, highly rated this year. Well, I think that's the thing that uh, <clears throat> people don't really understand. Like we, when we started here, we we had to build a program because there really hadn't been much success in Division One basketball here. So. The best way to, to build a program is to win basketball games. And then on top of that, when you get pretty good, it's hard to schedule games. So we, we kind of fight it from both ends. Um, the only problem we have is getting good teams to come into our building. We can play good teams. I mean, obviously, we're going to play four teams that we feel like can be in the top 25 in Dayton, Temple, Minnesota, and Miami of Florida. And then you've got Oral Roberts and uh, Detroit who are top echelon mid-major teams that our fans don't really understand that they are. When you add Ray McCallum, the coach's son at Detroit, to a team that won 20, 20 games, you know, you, you're getting a top 10 recruit that could have gone anywhere in the country. So you've got that, and then you play Cleveland State and people like that. So we have a very difficult schedule. We know it. I think we're at the point in our program where the non-league really doesn't matter anymore. We've won enough games for six years now that everybody knows we have a good program. So it's time now to take the next step, get this team ready to take the next step, and, and we just felt this was the best way to do it. Let me ask a follow-up on that. Uh, what scenario can you see, envision, for this conference getting two teams in the NCAA tournament? What has to happen? Um, I think mostly the best team has to lose in the conference championship game. I don't think anything else matters. I think if... If one of us has a great year and we lose in the semis, we're still not getting in. I just don't see it. So I think it, the scenario was ripe a few years ago when Kent State was was really good, and if we could have won the game, I think they would have got in. But there's been very few scenarios in the last 60 years where that's been the case. So we're still at the point now where, you know, that's something that we, we just can't really worry about too much. We can't control that. Are there any other questions from the media? I'll ask another one. About that, Steve, you've been around here, again, a long time. but And you played at Dayton. I think you played them twice. You were down there when uh, that double overtime game. So how do you feel? Dayton's the NIT champ. Uh, you're going to a Big Ten place, back to Temple, uh, you know, playing an ACC team. Are you welcome that kind of challenge? Sure, I think, uh, you know, like what Coach said, we've been, you know, trying to, to win games. Um, but since I've been here, we've been yet to really um, make statements with our wins. Um, we've beaten the people we should, and we've lost we've lost close games to the bigger schools. So I think this year we're, we're looking to get over the hump and, uh, you know, and, and win all of those games. But, um, you know, Coach said, I, Coach said it best saying that, um, you know, that we uh, – you know, we want to win the conference championship, but I think if we can win a few of those games, we go into the conference back tournament with a lot more confidence, I think, rather than, um, you know, are we good enough? And, um, you know, I, I welcome it personally. So, I think, I think, you know, on top of that, the hard part is we've always felt like we've been built really good for the MAC. You know, if you look at our teams in the past, you know, we've been 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, in the middle and tough and hard-nosed, and we were built really good for the MAC, but we haven't been built great for the big boys, basically. We feel like we're built a little bit better for the big boys now because we've got the big guy in the middle. Now he hasn't mature yet, but I think, I think that's the key now. What we're trying to do is develop so that we can take that next step. And we feel like at this point in our juncture that we're, going, we're not going to get hurt recruiting-wise by not winning quite as many games, so, so we might as well... We might as well let our hair down and go for it. Now, early on, we were able to beat the Mississippi States. The, you know, we were in the game with Clemson. We beat Florida State. We beat Temple in the NIT. But we, we did it with juniors and seniors, and we're back at that point again, we feel like. We have a pretty experienced team, and we feel like doing that this year will make us that much better next year. Coach, in specifics with relation to Zeke, you talked about you've seen the growth from him. I guess what are the specifics of that? What are the areas of his game you've seen the most growth in from year one headed into year number two? He's stronger. He can receive the ball much better. His jump hook's automatic. 
Um, his knowledge of the game is better. His work ethic is better. His emotional maturity is better. Are, is he perfect in all those areas? Absolutely not. But he, uh, he's, a, he's a work in progress, but he's a talented work in progress. So I think overall the main thing that has made him better is his maturity level as a person. Just a much better maturity level, handles criticism better, comes to work with his pail every day much better than he did last year. Couldn't hardly get through a practice last year at times. But I just think he's he's just much better equipped to get, get through the season than he was last year. Last year we force fed his minutes. This year we're going to try to force feed his touches because he's a very unselfish guy. Uh, last year we played very rarely through him. This year we want to play through him. Nick, it looks like your outside shot has really improved since when you arrived on campus. With that being said, are you still going to come to Frenchie and me after the games and have us talk to Coach Dan Brown that you playing the three? Or are you still happy to play the four? You better believe it. Uh, no, it's that's one of the big emphasis the coach said uh, last year I needed to fix it. It's just going to be another weapon to us because, like, you know, Brett is Brett's doing a great job since Brett McKnight. He's doing a great job with sh shooting, and then opens the space for inside. And um, you know that this year, coach said I need to work on that. I, I always had it, even my high school days and before that, and even when I came here. And you know, coach said just you know you lost your confidence a little bit. And we need to build up. So I did work a lot with uh, coach Parrish uh, before he left, and now coach Peters is taking off um, on just the technique of the shot and everything. And I worked really hard this summer and. You know what? My coach was my mom. Yeah, my mom has a great stroke when she played back in the day, so she was helping out a lot, too. We were going, I think, shooting psychological a lot of times. He's, he spent a lot of time at it. He's done a really good job of receiving the ball down in, down in which I think is, is key for him. But he's a diversified guy. He can guard any position on the floor, and I think that's that's key. We're going to open questions to the floor. If anybody has a question, please raise your hand. Well, I think uh, originally he gained about, he started at 210 last year, and we had him up to about 228. So that's about 18 pounds, but I don't know what he has on him right now because we've been running up and down a little bit. But we figure he'll hold about, if he can hold 15 and then add another 15 next year, then I think we have him where we want him. One more question, Coach. How are you looking to next year and your recruits uh, from high school? Well, we have two that we're supposed to sign today, two guards. One, well, I guess I can't say where they're from, but we got a couple coming. <laughs> that was a trick question, wasn't it? Coach, what do you think about a playoff for Division One basketball versus the top 64? Oh, you mean everybody getting in the tournament? Mm -hmm. Not really. I mean... It just cheapens it. It's a, it's a big thrill to have to make it on your own right now. And to me, you know, how many are there? 341, that's too many. Should it be more than 64? Well, there's a few more. It's 68, whatever. That's not more. <laughs> the hard part in, in our basketball, in men's basketball, is we have 64 and then we have 32. We have 32 NIT berths, but really not really because those those teams get automatic bids, so there's very few NIT bids. So the NIT tournament's a really good tournament, but it's hard to get into. You almost have to win the regular season of your conference to get in. In some ways, it's harder to get in than the NCAA for a mid-major. Any other fan questions? I, I like the fan questions. Coach, I have two. Let's first we'll do the first one, and then if I like that one, you can ask the second. One. <laughs> Fair enough. We talk a lot about Zeke. Do you have any goals on minutes per game that you want him to play? As many as he can play. 
you know, uh, what we're going to try to do is, is try to rest them as much as possible in the first half so that we can play them more in the second half. And we didn't do that the other night because we were a little short-handed. So uh, we, we played them 19 minutes the first half, the last game. But part of that is trying to build up his endurance. And I think that's probably an area that's much better for him this year than it was last year. So uh, I don't know. I, we think we can get him up to 27, 28 minutes a game. I don't see much more than that. And hopefully we'll stay away from foul trouble. That's an, another area we have to get better at with our two big ones. We want to keep him on the floor as much as we can. That was a good first one. What's the second one? Uh, what do you anticipate Quincy Diggs' role to be on this team? That's a tough question. Uh, physically, he's really good. He needs to learn to play harder, and he needs to learn what we do. Um, the better he could be, the better team we're going to have. But by the same token, you know, he has to come around in order to, you know, for us to be good. So uh, that's a hard question to answer at this point. We, we're going to try to force his minutes right now without giving him minutes, and he has to play better in practice. Like he's shown that he can play well in the games and the scrimmages, the inner squad scrimmages, but he hasn't played particularly well in practice, which I'm an old guy, so you have to play well in practice to play for me. So he has to do better in that area. Coach, uh, what can you tell us about Milligan? Well, they're... Where, like, where are they? They're out of Illinois. I'm not exactly sure where. <laughs> Their coach is a friend of ours, so we... We were looking for a game late. And the games were pretty dried up. And so we figured we might as well play a friend. And uh, they're a Division three school that's got a lot of new guys. But if, if you know anything about basketball or sports in general, you know anybody can beat you on any given night. All you have to do is look at the exhibitions. Bellarmine beat uh, Xavier. And uh, Tennessee lost the other night, right? To somebody else who wasn't very good. Indianapolis, so you know, in basketball, it only takes one or two guys, and you can be pretty good. So we don't know a lot about them really, but we know we better win that one. Are there any other questions, Coach Dambrot, Nicola, Steve? Thanks for your time.